Hi everyone, so a while ago, a couple months ago, I made a video called 10 Tips for Beginner Digital Artists and I've been wanting to expand on my points that I made in that video. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend you go check it out after this video. I made some points in that video that I'm not going to talk about in this video because I don't want to be redundant. But I did talk about different kinds of software you can use for making digital art that isn't really expensive like Photoshop. So I recommended like Krita and Gimp and Paint Sai, but it turns out like Gimp I actually isn't that good, a lot of people don't like it, and I always had troubles with it too, like it was always really slow on my computer. And Krita, I guess people might find it confusing or it lags, but a lot of people recommended Fire Alpaca, this one called Medibang, I don't know how if I'm saying that right, and Clip Studio Paint is, it costs money but it's more on the budget side, and there's just a lot of other ones, and also some apps like Procreate, I've heard of before, you can get on the iPad, and I've seen a lot of artists using that one, so there's lots of options out there for completely free stuff. But my first tip would be whatever program you end up getting is to customize your workspace, so, so try to take advantage of all the options that you have in your program to to customize the experience so try to name your tools or like try to set keyboard shortcuts for tools that you find easiest to use try to move around the windows um, this might be under window option or view usually there's like different customization options and you can change around the workspace like paint Sai has this that's the one I'm using and I'll be using paint Sai version 2 in this video in case you are wondering it's the second version they have it released on their website I don't think it's completely finished though but I use it anyway and I really like it I would recommend it so try Try to find all the customization options for your program to make it the most comfortable for you to use and you might have to look up online like how to customize this or different options. You can even play around with like brush settings but that's not really the the interface itself. I'm just talking about like the interface itself, the way the program looks and where your tools are, your shortcuts, your windows, everything like that. I'm not sure how customizable everything is, but I know that with Paint Sai you can customize it a fair bit. Some of these tips might be obvious to you. Um, but some of them I actually forget about a lot, so my second tip would be to use gradients or just realize that that tool exists because I always forget about the gradient tool. It's really useful for just dropping in base colors or just dropping in like a background. I always forget about it and I really should use it more when I'm like filling in a character just to add more color to it. I think gradients can be very useful for stuff, so just remember that gradients exist. If your program has it, because I know Paint Tool Side doesn't have gradients, but Paint Tool Side 2 does have a gradient tool, so that's why I like to use it a lot. My third tip is if you are drawing your character, like say it's all sketchy and you finished like sketching in your character or whatever object you're going to color in, go around the outside and clean it up. Make sure that just the outer edges of the sketch are kind of clean and then take the magic wand tool, select the outside of your character, and then make the selection a little bit bigger like expand the selection by a couple pixels, invert the selection and then fill it in. And that's basically your entire sketch completely filled in and then you can start painting on top of it. I learned this tip through a YouTube tutorial and I just fi I find it so helpful. It speeds up my workflow so much. So I would definitely recommend using this method. And then I also put my sketch layer on multiply and then in between the sketch and the base color, that's where I fill in the colors. And then on top of that, that's where I paint in the character. That's kind of my process. So there's like a little tip for you. Tip number four is kind of a joke, but I mean, it's important. Don't lose your pen. I try not to lose my pen. I try to keep it in a place that I will remember. So like try to have a place where you keep your pen so you don't lose it. Because I hate when I can't find my pen. It's like my world turns upside down for a couple minutes until I find my pen. Tip number five, this is just basically a tip for art in general. It's just um, what teachers will tell you if you're in a painting class, which is if you want something to look bright, put dull colors around it. So if you're making a drawing that's all neon colors, which is really easy to do with digital art, it's not going to look that bright, but if you really want, like say the character has a red bow and you really want their red bow to stand out, you would make the rest of the color slightly more dull and then the red bow looks that much more bright. So that's just a little tip. It kind of applies to every kind of art though, not just digital, but I know with digital art, it's so much easier to make things look, it's so much easier to get bright colors because you have every color available. Whereas with watercolor, sometimes it's hard to get bright colors unless you have like really good quality paint. And kind of expanding on this, number six would be to paint everything in um, 
in doll colors. So, so when you start filling in all the colors of your character or your object, make them a little more dull than they should be. And when you're done, you can even like lower the brightness by using like a an adjustment and then go in with the highlights on top of the dull color so like go in with the lighter version of the color and it just makes everything look really nice it makes everything glow um, sometimes it's easier to paint highlights than to start with the midtone and then paint the shadows and then paint the highlights on top of the midtone so try to start with the shadows and then put the highlights over top I don't do this enough but when I do it just makes things easier and it's also really fun just to see it come to life and tip number seven your line work doesn't have to be perfect I know with digital art you can see every little pixel and you can nitpick everything and try it. You have the freedom to make to like change things as much as you want and to keep erasing things over and over but your line work doesn't have to be perfect. It can be um, slightly sketchy. It doesn't have to be flawless unless of course you want it to be like there's different styles but just because digital art is digital doesn't mean everything you do has to be super crisp. You can leave things sketchy or messy just like you would with paint with a normal painting in like traditional art. So your line work doesn't have to be crisp and flawless. Sometimes the look of hand-drawn line work is um, a lot more like aesthetically pleasing than like crisp digital looking line work, but it all depends on your style. But just know you don't have to make it crisp all the time. You can make it more traditional looking. And you can do this by like lowering your stabilizer or increasing your minimum brush size or just like through practice, I guess. Keep practicing the, the look you're going for. And expanding on this, like you can leave things rough. I used to try to, to polish things and keep, keep on polishing and keep on blending and make things look really perfect. It depends on your style, but I just realized for me, keeping things more loose and more like painterly looking, that, that is my style more. And when I start to polish things too much, I overwork it and then everything becomes stiff and I overwork the colors and it's just not as spontaneous as it was before. I'm not saying leave things super messy and, and sketchy, but you don't have to polish every little brush stroke. You can leave visible brush strokes. You can do whatever you want, but this is just something to remember that you don't have to make everything look neat all the time. I don't know about you, but I always forget that the lasso tool exists. I always forget about it and it's so useful for quickly selecting areas, so definitely use the lasso tool. I always forget about it and I always use the, the selection pen on Paint Tool Sci, but definitely use the lasso tool if you're- well, of course every program should have it. Just remember that it exists. I don't know, everyone probably always uses it and I'm like the only one that, that forgets that tool is there, but in case you're like me, remember that the lasso tool exists. And last but not least, digital art is just as valid as traditional and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Digital art is real art. It's not cheating. The computer isn't drawing for you. You are making every brushstroke. It is, it is art and don't let anyone make you feel bad for being a digital artist because there are so many professional digital artists that like it's just part of it's just a standard normal form of art nowadays like it shouldn't even be argued that it's not a form of art it is art it's just on the computer which is more practical for our lives nowadays because everything we do is digital like on our phones and logos have to be digital files and video games need like digital files working with companies to create art for them usually is digital because they're going on online but of course they can be traditional too but both are equal they're the same they're not the same but they are both same in the sense that they are both art and don't let anyone make you feel bad for being a digital artist everyone can have their preference like you can prefer traditional over digital or vice versa but both i think should be considered equal just different they're different but they're both art that is my my little, my two cents about that. I want to make a video about that one day. <laughs> I did make one before, but I want to remake it. I really hope this helped you. I just wanted to, to give you a couple extra tips expanding on the video I made previously. I definitely recommend you go check out that video. I'll link it in the card above because I cover a lot of really important tips in that video, kind of like almost like fundamentals of digital art, but not really, like just my personal things that I would recommend to any beginner. And these just kind of expand on everything. So I really hope you found this helpful. And if you have any other tips, people read the comments and they might see what you wrote and they might find it helpful. So I really hope this video was helpful and if you want me to cover any other topic like this in the future, let me know in the comments and I will see you in my next video.